friends, welcome back to the Craft Castle. My name is Ashley and recently I got the X-Tool S1, which is the smaller diode version to the CO2 X-Tool P2. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to assemble and use the X-Tool S1 automatic conveyor feeder. I have previously done this for the X-Tool P2, but because it's a whole different machine, it's going to work a little bit different. So I'm gonna show you how we're going to use the automatic conveyor feeder. One thing before I get started, in my unboxing video, I said that the automatic conveyor feeder for the P2 is the same one that you would use for the S1, and that was untrue. Nothing worse than getting false information, and I definitely don't wanna do that to you, so I just wanted to clarify that real quick. If you have the P2 and the S1, you're gonna to need to purchase two separate automatic conveyor feeders. One specifically for the S1 and the other one specifically for the P2. So just keep that in mind. So the very first thing that I'm gonna to do today, which obviously is going to be the obvious, I'm gonna unbox the automatic conveyor feeder and assemble it and put it onto my X-Tool S1. Now I am hoping and praying that I can actually put the conveyor feeder with my machine on one desk because over at the p2 the way that i have my desk set up i actually have to use two of these rolling carts one of the front one of the back in order to use the automatic conveyor feeder so crafting prayers please i really really hope that i can keep this thing all on one table so then i can just not have to drag more tables around in my craft room so very first thing we're going to assemble this and then we will get to actual crafting let's go <music> I was gonna show you how to assemble the automatic conveyor feeder for the S1, but here's the deal. I actually do a really terrible job at explaining how to assemble this. It's not that difficult, but it's definitely very weird to explain. I can tell you right now that Xtool does an amazing job with their pamphlets or their how-to booklets, brochures that come within the Xtool S1. So to be honest with you, just follow the booklet because they are gonna be so much better than anything that I can tell you how to do. Two things that I would like to note here because they don't tell you this in the booklet, but I found that you probably need to know this just because it's two things that happen to me and I face some challenges. First, the crumb tray, that like bottom tray thing, take that out and put that at the very bottom of the riser base because the automatic conveyor feeder thing will sit where that crumb tray is at. So you're gonna need to move that all the way down. Also, for a while there, I was looking for this cord of which they said that I had to plug it into the machine. It's like the very last step. Then I realized that the cord was actually already attached to the bottom of the motherboard of the conveyor feeder. So I had to like stick my hand underneath the thing in order to make it loose. The reason why I didn't pull it art all the way out and get it that way is because when you put in the conveyor feeder, you have to put in four screws. And of course I've already screwed it in. So that was kind of a pain in the butt. So the cord is underneath the conveyor feeder motherboard thing. And then also take that crumb tray out and just put it at the bottom of the riser base. Setting up the conveyor feeder is definitely not hard. Now here is the deal. I had these two pieces of wood left over from my P2 project with the conveyor feeder and I just figured that I would use it for the S1. However, I have found out that both of these pieces of wood do not fit within the conveyor feeder for the S1. The largest size that you're gonna be able to do with the S1 automatic conveyor feeder is 18 and a half inches wide by a half an inch thick. Now you can buy additional rails, which I already have right there, but if you did not purchase additional rails, then you can only do up to 39 inches. But again, you can buy additional rails and you can do as long as your heart pleases. So with that being said, I need to run to the hardware store because the wood that I have here doesn't work. Let's go. I made it to my local Lowe's. It's right down the street from my house. There's a Home Depot, but it's further down the road. My little secret tip here from shopping at Lowe's is just enter into the indoor lumber yard because that's gonna be where you can get in and out really quick at the cashier. Now, generally when I'm shopping for wood for my laser, I go to the very back of the store where the project panels are. They are sold as two foot by four foot, pieces of wood and honestly they work the best for my p2 however because i'm going to be using the conveyor feeder i need something that's no more wider than 18 and a half inches wide and they really don't have a whole lot of selections besides this right here this is the only thing that i can find that fits the parameters of the s1 so this is the only 
piece of wood that I was able to find that would fit the X-Tool S1. That being said, I totally just could have purchased one of those pieces of panels that I normally would do for the P2 and have Lowe's cut it down for me for free or I could have used my table saw downstairs in my garage and cut it down to size, but you know what? I'm just gonna try and make this as easy as possible for me. So I just purchased the one single piece of wood that would fit inside the X-Tool S1. This is going to be the code. And again, found this at Lowe's. Now, the setup process for something that's smaller like this is not difficult at all. The one thing that you do wanna keep in mind is, is that your piece of wood has to go underneath the little rolling pins right here. So I am going to adjust this. I'm gonna raise it up high to where I'm gonna be able to slide my piece of wood in and out of my conveyor feeder. And also you will notice that these two legs right here aren't underneath my piece of wood. You're gonna to want to slide those in so your piece of wood or your material lays underneath your piece of material. So we're gonna just move this just like this and it is going to be able to lay on to the piece of the material. You will see that these two pieces right here are above my piece of material and I am going to be able to roll this through the conveyor feeder. Now the one thing that you want to keep in mind is you want to use the ruler that is on your conveyor feeder to line up your material nice and straight so it doesn't get all wonky on you. Okay, when it's in place, you want to lower your wheel until your material is stuck in there and you're able to use your bottom roller to move your material in and out. Now that we have that done, we are just going to turn on our machine and then we'll go to the computer and set something up. I just opened up a new window in Xtools Creative Space and the very first thing you want to do is change your mode over from the base plate to the conveyor feeder. This is going to be your working space for the conveyor feeder. It's very, very long. The next thing I want to do is set focus onto my material. I wanna make sure that I get really good cut settings. So what I'm going to do is I am going to take my material and I'm going to roll my material in just a little bit. Then I'm going to take my head. When we take the head over to our material, you're going to see this line right here. That's what you want because your aiming focus feature is right here. So you want your little pin to be on top of your material. Then going over to our computer, you just want to press this auto focus feature and it is going to do an auto focus. So now my machine is auto-focused, so I'm gonna move my little aiming tool to the top left corner of my material, just like that. Now what I'm gonna do is test my material because I actually have no idea what settings I should use for this material. So all I'm gonna do is insert a circle. Any circle is fine. We're gonna change the parameters over from score to cut because I want to cut something out here. Then what I'm going to do is come over here to these four boxes and I'm gonna do the material test array. You can change these settings if you wanted to, but then you just wanna press okay. Now I have shown you how to do a material test array in a previous video. This right here is what I suggest everyone to use if you're using a new material. Now let me press pause and explain what is on my screen right now. This little red arrow is where my head is at. So right here in the corner is going to be the top left of my material. Now, everything that's in this gray area, you do not want to put anything in this gray area because nothing's going to cut. This is kind of like the buffer area. I am going to put my cut settings or my cut test grid to the very top of my gray area. So everything from the gray area down is where we can put our cutout. Now, if you're curious on where this is going to cut on your material, all you need to do is come up here and press framing. And then over at your machine, you just wanna press the blue button. And what you're gonna do is watch where the arrow goes on your material. It might take you a couple tries just to figure it out real quick, but all you're essentially looking for is where this is going my little aiming tool lands on the entire thing lands on my piece of the material so that means when i actually go ahead and cut this out it is going to cut out on my actual piece of material okay 
When I'm happy and satisfied, I'm just gonna press framing complete. And now what I wanna do is process this. I wanna figure out what good settings we should be using for this material. So I'm gonna press process. And before I press start, I am going to shut the lid on my S1. I'm also going to open my window and put my vent out of my window. You wanna make sure and vent out when you're doing any type of laser cutting. Okay, then you just wanna press start on your computer. Press OK process. And then you just wanna press your blue button on your S tool. Now this is done processing and I can tell you because this is an entire open air system, it is actually really smoky in here, holy cannoli. And it looks like even the 100 power in 10 speed did not go through on my cuts. So I'm gonna have to adjust my cut settings here. I went ahead and did another material test array, this time using different settings, settings that I think are really going to work for this material. And after my second try, I did find some pretty good settings to use. I think I got some really good cut settings right here. So I think I'm going to use the four speed and the 100 power. I think that's going to be the best bet for this material because the six speed, I have to really push my hand down in order for it to come out versus the four speed 100 power did perfectly fine. This wood right here is about a quarter of an inch thick. It, it is actually pretty thick. Maybe it's a little bit more than a quarter of an inch, but this is actually a pretty thick piece of wood and I'm really surprised that I can actually get a semi-decent cut with that. Okay, so now that I have really good cut settings for my material, I am just going to take this and move this over outside of our working area or our workspace, just so I can remember what settings to use here in a second. So I think what I'm gonna do is just insert a text and just put in some random letters to use to cut out. Okay, so I am going to change my processing type over from score to cut. You could also engrave this if you wanted to. If you had like a long surfboard or something like that, you could totally just engrave the material. Then what I wanna do is come down here to text and I am going to change my text over. Now, if you are gonna be doing a word that needs to be connected on this conveyor feeder, what I would suggest using is a thicker cursive font because this will end up being pretty fragile if you use like a thinner font. So you just want to use like a, a pretty thick cursive font. So obviously this one right here, I would say would probably be too thin. Now that I've picked out a font, all I'm gonna do is come down here and press weld. And what that's gonna do is it is going to get rid of all the inner lines throughout my letters, creating one really long font. Now the height of my board is six inches, so I wanna make sure that my letters do not go over six inches. Now I want this to be turned over 90 degrees, and I'm going to drag this down over here in my work area. You wanna make sure that it doesn't hit this gray stuff, and also because now my material is used with the test grids, I am going to try and avoid that too. Now, when we have placed this in a spot where I think it's going to look good, what I would do is go in ped and press framing. Then what we need to do is press the button on the machine. But before we do that, what you wanna do is make sure that your little aimbot tool right here misses this right here for the actual cutout because we've already used it, but then also that it stays onto your material. If your little aiming hairline red line on your material goes off of your material, then that means that your cut is going to go off your material. So you always wanna make sure that this little aiming thing is always on your material, but then also misses what we've already done right now. So we'll press this button. Now I can already tell that I need to drag my cutout down just a little bit because it does not miss my original Thing that I have here, which is going to be a problem. So what I'm going to do is go over into my software and I am just going to drag down my cutout just a little bit. And then we're gonna press framing again. This is really important because you wanna make sure that you have a really good cutout. This piece of wood was about $6, so you definitely don't want to mess up this cutout. Okay, so I like the way that looks. However, I did miss something. On the back, these two things right here, these also need to be underneath your material 
just like what we did at the front. So you wanna make sure and drag these over. So what we are going to do is we are going to press framing complete on our computer. I am going to readjust the settings to this, my cutting parameters. So I'm gonna to go to this easy set panel. Now I have already discovered that I need 100 power and four speed because we did that test grid that's over here. And that is what I've determined is the best cut settings for this particular material. Okay, now what I'm going to do, now that I have that all done, is I am just gonna come over here into process shutting the lid to my machine. I'm gonna press start on my computer and then I am going to press the blue button on the side of my machine. In total, that cutout took 11 and a half minutes and I have to tell you right now that I am blown away about how quick it was able to cut this pretty thick piece of wood. So all I need to do now is just press OK on my computer. Going over into the X tool, you can open this up. And then all we need to do is just roll out the material from our machine. So we're just going to use the lower black knob and we're just going to roll this out. And if we got our cut settings correct, what's going to end up happening is I'm going to be able to lift this up and just nicely slide out my cutout. And look at this welcome cutout. Didn't this thing turn out absolutely fabulous? There is not an issue with anything. Turning around on the back, it does look like it charred a lot. Uh, one thing that you could do is mask the back side of your wood to avoid any of this charring. But what essentially is happening is, is that this right here is hitting the arms to my conveyor feeder and it's creating what is called flashback so if you were concerned about this all you would need to do is mask this back wood but the front of this cutout there's not any charring at all and because i use thicker wood it actually isn't as fragile as what i thought it would be but that is probably because i did use thicker wood but this cutout from the front side looks absolutely amazing no issues at all one thing that I forgot to mention here, and it was actually really important to me. I think I got distracted at the fact that I had to go to the hardware store. The one thing is, is that this conveyor feeder, the way that it sits without any of those extension rails or anything, I was able to keep it all on one table. So obviously you're at the very end of my table right here. If I wanted to do an even longer piece of material, I would have to get another table just to make it accommodate for more material. But if you were just doing the standard conveyor feeder, you don't have to have an extremely large setup. It all fits on one crafting table. Now, my final thought for this entire cutout is, is that the x S1 is a diode laser. And if you're an experienced laser owner, you would probably tend to think that diode lasers aren't as powerful as CO2 lasers like the P2. However, I am thoroughly impressed it was able to cut something this thick and not have any issues. I mean, this right here is a really good cutout and it only took 11 minutes to cut out, which is absolutely amazing. Now, I don't have an apples to apples comparison for you of what time difference would be for the S1 versus the P2, but what I can tell you is, is that everything that I've tried to do apples to apples between the S1 and P2, this one right here is a 50 watt and that one right here is a 40. You don't see that big of a difference. I, you're talking like seconds. So it's really not that big of a time difference. As I form my opinion more about the S1, I have to tell you that this right here, I think is a great starter machine for someone who's just coming into a laser machine and has no idea how to craft with a laser. This thing right here is really cool. Now the other diode lasers that are on the market, especially that come from Glowforge, their wattage for their heads are only five and 10. So you're not gonna be able to cut really thick pieces of material on that note. Even if you were to get one of those Glowforges because you wanted to buy the brand or whatever, you totally would not be able to do a conveyor feeder like this because they don't have the ability to do that. They are the same exact price between the S1 and all the smaller Glowforges and I would say that if you were in the hunt for a diode laser, you should just get the X-Tool S1. This thing right here does so much. The list of things it can't do, honestly, just, I would say it's okay. 
It's totally okay. I'm okay with not being able to cut all acrylics on the S1 because I'm actually really, really impressed with this thing right here. I mean, this diode laser is actually a beast, a beast. It can cut the really thick, long material. It can do a lot of things that the P2 does, like engraving tumblers or even engraving metal with the infrared. I am thoroughly impressed with Xtool and all the machines that came out with. I feel like they come out with a new machine all the time and every single time they do, I just keep getting wowed more and more and more. I cannot wait to see what else they come out with because I just know that when they do come out with something else, it is going to be so worth it. All right, y'all, I sure hope I inspired you to create, and I'll see you later.